Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's E3 of course and uh, it's now time after the press conference of yesterday for me to wrap stuff up. Uh, man, I was up obviously very late last night, I'm pretty tired now, I had a whole pizza, I ate too much of it, I felt really bad, <laughs> I had a whole bag of Doritos. Look, I've just treated myself like shit, I drank coke, it was... Oof. It was bad. It was a bad time. But um, we're going to wrap up the Microsoft press conference today. Um, and uh, I'll record a Sony one too. And obviously Nintendo is later today. I should mention, uh, I will probably be live streaming uh, my live reaction to the Nintendo digital event. Uh, and I'll probably put up a video when that's happening on my YouTube channel. So you should be able to get there. But um, if you want to watch me watch the Nintendo Digital event, uh, that should be a thing that you should be able to do, um, and hopefully uh, Twitch won't crash or burn or anything horrible happen. So, let's talk about Microsoft. Uh, they started off the show with Halo, uh, which was, uh, I believe, kind of a single player demo, then they had some multiplayer integration in it. Look, I'll be honest, I wasn't paying that much attention to it. I don't really know much about Halo, and I'm not super interested in it, so it's one of those things where it's like... Nagi and I were actually both trying to kind of fix our streams at the time because we we're like, oh no, this one's better than this one. Like, because the YouTube stream was like higher quality, the Twitch one was just a better kind of consistent experience. Like, the YouTube one was buffering way more. Um, so we we're just trying to figure out which stream should we use, which is the best one. Um, and so while the Halo demo was playing, that's kind of what I was doing. Um, which, uh, you know, I, I guess I missed some stuff, but um, yeah, Halo looks good. I mean, it's Halo. Like, what are you gonna... It's nothing you can really complain about with it. It's. I'm sure, you know, people are excited for it and everything, but it's, uh, it's not my thing, so what are you gonna do? Um, I'm gonna lean over here, because I have some notes on everything that got announced. Alright, so then we go into ReCore, which uh, we didn't get any gameplay for, unfortunately. I'd really like to know what that game actually is. But the concept seemed really cool, like this girl in the desert with this robot dog uh, who has this, like, the blue core inside of it that activates it, and that, that blue core she puts into another giant robot. Like, it seems like a neat concept, and here's the kicker. It comes from Keiji Inafune, creator of Mega Man, and Armature. Now, I don't know who Armature are, they're uh, a bunch of ex-retro studios developers form their own studio. Uh, they've done some porting stuff in the past. They made Batman uh, Arkham Origins Blackgate, which I really enjoyed. Not many people like that game. It's like the 2D Metroid-style game uh, for uh, Arkham Origins for the Vita and 3DS. Not many people liked it. I loved it. I thought it was a really fun game. I thought it was really cool. So uh, I like those guys. I like what they do. So I'm behind them, and hopefully this game turns out well, whatever the hell it is. I literally have no idea um but it like concept wise it seemed promising so i'm down for that um then we have a huge huge kick in the nuts for sony um they announced xbox 360 backwards compatibility on xbox one now this isn't like 100 percent across the board straight away they're going to build it up over time and it seems similar to what they did with xbox backwards compatibility um on the 360 or at least try to uh which is like do it game by game on a game by game basis um, and so they have like 20 titles available right now, about 100 by the end of the year, I think they said, and eventually they'll just try and get everything on there. But um, the fact that you don't have to pay for these games again, if you own the retail disc and put it in, you literally have to just like download it straight away. Like it's, it seems super simple, easy to use, and you don't have to pay for games again. And it really is like, because Sony right now are charging people for PlayStation Now through the streaming service to play their old games, their PS3 games. It was a direct shot across the bow, and I think that was a it was a smart move, really. Because um, honestly, when you think about it, I don't think Sony can do the same thing. You think about the PS3's arch architecture. No, not architecture. Architecture. Um, it was fucked, man. The cell processor and everything involving that is just it's uh, it's a big old mess. And so I think that's why Sony had such a hard time in terms of moving PS3 stuff over to PS4 and why they're using PS now is because they literally can't really make backwards compatibility possible. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. And uh, I don't know what Sony will do about it, if they'll do anything, but it's a huge thing for Microsoft. That's really big and people underestimate backwards compatibility at your peril because it's pretty important. Uh, then next up we had uh, the announcement of a new wireless controller for, three, uh, for Xbox One. Sorry. That controller looks rad, man. It looks so fucking cool. You have, like, changeable parts. You have, like, these scuffs, I think they're called, on the back. Um, loads of... 
it's it's basically like geared as a shooter controller or like a like a pro gaming controller really um and it looked awesome uh, the only problem is it's really fucking expensive apparently it's 150 dollars for the controller so it's really the sort of thing that like esports people are gonna buy and no one else is because fuck man that's a ridiculous proposition 150 dollars for a controller you can jog on no one's gonna buy that unless they are super into like having the most precision that they want with their uh with their controller so it looks cool but fucking that price uh then we had fallout 4 came out again on stage which was like oh we already saw this, yes. Okay, so look, let me give you a caveat. Everyone's losing their fucking minds about Fallout 4, and it's like, Fallout 4 wins E3, game of the show. I... I... I've... I've never played a Fallout game. I don't care. So... Yeah, I don't... I... I mean, it's a post-apocalyptic setting, and it's really not my kind of thing. Like, I don't like post-apocalyptic settings. It's also, like, mainly first person, which I don't like, generally. Um seems cool and I'm sure it has choice and stuff and maybe I'll play a Fallout game one day but right now I just can't muster any enthusiasm so I'm not going to so it's Fallout I guess um, the cool thing about this though is they announced that mods made on PC can be transferred to Xbox One which is fucking huge like if that's an exclusive feature for the Xbox One version that gives it such an advantage over the PS4 um, uh, version of Fallout 4 it really does because holy shit, those games live and die. Like, in their long life, they live and die by the mod support. You look at something like Skyrim, which has continued to just be a juggernaut because of mod support throughout the years, and uh, having that accessible on the console space, that's huge. That's really big, and it means that, you know, those guys can get the same kind of experience. Obviously, they can't make the mods on Xbox One, but at least they can experience them, and I think most people just experience mods. They don't make them, so... Fair enough on that point. Um, then we have uh, EA coming out, talking about EA Access. Uh, Titanfall is now on EA Access, which is great. That game's fucking awesome. Um, not enough people played that game uh, for long enough, and I understand why, but Titanfall was fucking rad. I love that game so much. Um, and then they said uh, Dragon Age Inquisition uh, is uh, is going to be coming out on the EA Access as well. So two of EA's recent AAA titles are uh, being offered there. So that's cool. Uh, and on Xbox, um, Plants vs. Zombie, Gun Warfare 2. It's another Gun Warfare Plants vs. I like the Plants vs. Zombies games. I really like the first one on uh, iPad and like PC and stuff. That game is fantastic. It's awesome tower defense. It's the only tower defense game I've ever liked in my life. So... I, I'm a fan of that, but fucking this shooting thing, it's like, it's great. It looks fine. I don't know. It's, it, it seems a little generic in many ways, despite the fact that it's trying not to be, you know, like even like the, the name gun warfare is kind of ripping on the call of duty, modern warfare thing. And it's okay. It looked fine. I'm not interested. So let's move on. Um, four to six. It's a car game. Uh, Dark Souls 3. Uh, Dark Souls 3 it was leaked a little bit beforehand, and now people are being like, oh no, you better be careful, otherwise you're going to turn into Assassin's Creed, all these fucking Souls games, because you literally just had Bloodborne, and now they're announcing Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 2 was last year. Like, if if they keep up this pace, I think people are going to get a little burned out um, on, on the Souls series. So be wary. Be wary from software, because um, people may disappear. Uh, not because they died in your game, but because they're not buying it anymore. So uh, Then we have The Division, i.e. E3 the game. Uh, really, it, it, like, it was first announced two years ago at E3, then it was at E3 last year. Is it E3? Like, we never hit anything about this game in between years, but it is just the E3 game that just shows up, and no one really knows if it's real or not. It seems like this year now is kind of getting more real. I think there's a playable demo. Um, I just listened to a uh, uh, breakdown of it with Jeff Gersman and Brad Shoemaker from Giant Bomb, who had some uh, hands-on time with it and uh, said that they actually played it. So, hey, it's actually a real video game. Um, and it's, it, like, it, they showed extended stuff of this in the Ubisoft press conference, um, and it looked kind of cool. Um, I will admit it did look pretty cool but it's not my sort of thing where like you have to have multiplayer teammates and you have to be it's like it's the mmo setup where you have to organize a time and you have to organize people and it's it's just a bit of a pain in the ass to play those games and i hope it has significant single player content because otherwise like i just wouldn't be interested in it whatsoever um i like the concept behind it but like it has to it has to be a game that you can play on your own really um if you can't well color me uninterested honestly so 
Uh, then we had Rainbow Six Siege, a uh, little bit of gameplay of that, not really too much more. Ubisoft later again, because it's an Ubisoft game, showed an extended gameplay demo and um, looks pretty similar to what we saw last year, Destructible Environments. Um, kind of coordination between team members seems a lot more necessary to coordinate shit in that game. Um, it seems like you have to have like voice chat and everything turned on because otherwise you are not going to work as a team and uh, complete the objective, so... That's cool. Uh, it's again. It's another. This fucking whole generation is. Let's do multiplayer online co-op adventure RPG elements. Oh, f- fuck, man. Why is every game a fucking open world cooperative online thing? F- Jesus, I can't handle it. It's too much. Um, then we have Gigantic, and I'm trying to think. I literally don't even. Oh, right, that was the one with Halucha. Yeah, it looked like colorful and shit. And then they were like, "Oh, it's a MOBA," and I was like, "Oh." Okay, it's a MOBA, so fuck it. Okay, um, idea Xbox. Here we go. Now it's time for games I care about. A um, bunch of indie stuff was shown, um, including stuff that's already out on PC, like West Dorado, uh, yeah, some other games. But the one, obviously, everyone's talking about, fucking Cuphead. My God, that's the best-looking game at Microsoft press conference. Like, fuck The Division, fuck Halo 5, fuck, like, what else do we have here? Fuck Gears, fuck Tomb Raider. Cuphead is the best looking game in that press conference. That art style is fucking gorgeous. That thing looks so good. Um, I'm really excited about Cuphead. I really want to play that. And obviously, it's an indie game on Xbox. Let's be frank. It's coming to PC. So I'll play it on PC later this year or next year. Whenever the hell it comes out. That is top of my list of excitement of uh, Xbox games. Fucking hell, Cuphead. Fuck yes. Um, they also showed a couple more really cool ones, like uh, this one called Beyond Eyes, which is about this blind uh, girl. Um, very, very pretty, very nice kind of art style going on there. Interested to see more of that. Um, Ashen, which was, it kind of had a bit of a rhyme vibe to it, had a bit of an eco vibe, you know. Um, not sure what the deal with that is, but it looked like the sort of thing that I'd be interested in. Um, and uh, Tacoma which is the follow-up to the the studio that did Gone Home, uh, Steve Fulbright, that's it, Steve Gaynor Studio, Fulbright. Um, Tacoma is set in space, it's first-person thing, but I uh, I get sick in those first-person experience games most of the time, so I probably won't, won't play it, unfortunately. It looked cool, but I don't want to be vomiting, so. Um, let's see, oh yeah, they, allow- they announced basically early access for Xbox, I can't remember what they called it, there's a specific name for it, but it was basically early access for Xbox. Just like, uh, I guess, like, I mean, now you get to play Daisy on your Xbox because it's a game that's not finished yet. But then we transition from Daisy. He's now making his own game with his own studio. Uh, it's called Ion, and it looks like Minecraft in space. I, I mean, I guess every game is Minecraft these days, but that's basically what he's doing. Um, it's, it's another survival space thing, exploration, big open, like No Man's, it's like No Man's Sky, but survival, I, he didn't really explain it that well, the trailer wasn't actual gameplay, as is the case with most of these things at the Microsoft press conference, which, again, like, they announced cool stuff, but fucking hell, man, show us some gameplay, please, it's, it's a game show, CG trailers are nice, but you should reserve those for, like, movie theatres and stuff, like, show us the video game. Uh, next we had Rise of the motherfucking Tomb Raider. Now, I haven't played that much of the original Tomb Raider. Not the original original, but the one that Crystal Dynamics did a few years back. Uh, I have it on my PC. It's been sitting there for ages. I played the first hour and a half or so, and then I never went back to it. And I need to go back to that game because I really love what I play, and I didn't know. I don't. I don't know why I put it down because it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, this new one. That gameplay thing was fantastic. That is totally down my street, up my alley, whatever you want to say. I'm I'm down with it. I want to watch that. I want to play that. I want to be in it. I want to be it to be in me. So Tomb Raider, Rise of Tomb Raider, I'm playing that game. Fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, of course, it's going to come to PC later. So I, I say I'm going to play all these games as if people think I'm going to buy an Xbox. No, all these games are going to come to PC so I'll play them there. Um, let's see. Rare Replay. The Rare Announcement that they're doing a collection of every fucking Rare game. 30 games for $30. That's fucking crazy. That's a ridiculous deal. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will be jumping on that, because that seems like an awesome thing to have. Uh, obviously, there's no Donkey Kong shit in there, because Nintendo owns Donkey Kong. Um, but, you know, you got Conker, you got Banjo, you got um, Perfect Dark, you got Viva Pinata. 
all the rare stuff you love and know. Uh, and then Rare announced a new IP, a new project. It's called Sea of Thieves. Again, it's... Like, I love this art style. I think it's awesome. I think the concept is great. It's being pirates. It's like a pirate MMO. But then you hear the thing, it's MMO, which means it has to be online. It has to be multiplayer. It has to be blah, 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 blah. And again, I say, like, the whole world is obsessed with fucking open world multiplayer. Loads of people inside it. It looks cool. It's, again... I just don't like this trend. It's not my favorite thing. Um, then we had Fable Legends. It's Fable Legends. Uh, then we had HoloLens. Oh my lord, HoloLens. Oh, I think a lot of people are blown away by this. Like, fuck, man. That Minecraft stuff looks so cool. Like, wow. It kind of blew me away. Like, he's just, like, fucking pinching, moving, dragging. Like, and, whoa. It was a really good presentation of that as well. Like, because the, they had a specific camera to show you what he was seeing through the HoloLens. Um... It looked really cool, and the fact that he could interact with it, and it all worked pretty well on stage. Obviously, it's an on-stage demo, so it's going to be engineered to work. But if it works like that in reality, it's kind of, it's kind of great. It's kind of pretty, pretty brilliant. So, see how that shakes out. And uh, ten things out. We had Gears of War stuff, uh, Ultimate Edition of Gears, uh, which the beta is out now, I believe, and that is coming later this year. And then they had a trailer for Gears of War 4, plus some gameplay, which really, if I'm honest, it looked more like Resident Evil than Gears of War, but it was, it, yeah, it looked like that kind of thing. You're a bro, you shoot, things die. It's Gears. So, that was the Microsoft press conference. Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought there was a lot of good stuff there. I think they had a solid showing, and... Um, yeah, strong stuff. Like, I'm really interested to see what uh, Recore is, like, what that game actually is. Obviously, hype for Tomb Raider. Cuphead is my jam. Some good stuff in there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess uh, that is going to be me. I'll uh, do another one of these for Sony, and then we'll watch Nintendo later today. So, uh, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!